Welcome to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. The first story is called New Executives. I worked in the automotive industry, started as a co-op student and worked up to be a contract quality engineer. I spent almost five years there before having to find new work. I had been there on co-op for two years and was given the opportunity for a contract, even though I wasn't done with school. My old boss and new boss liked that I was a dedicated employee and had a great work ethic. I had a great reputation with the engineering team and though I made some mistakes, the floor staff trusted me. During my second year on the contract, I worked with a truck manufacturer that we made some parts for and I had been their contract person for issues and testing requests. One day, this manufacturer had a part fail catastrophically. They called our head office and threatened us with a recall. It was all hands on deck. I went out to my customer and took care of them. It was a complete mess for about 6 weeks, but we solved the problem. My customer had high prices for me and wanted to make sure that I was going to manage their account for the future. Fast forward to the 4 months before I leave. The company gets sold and my contract is now going to be my last with them as the new owners want to bring in their own team. I talk to my boss, but he is in a hiring freeze until the next fiscal year. So I'm now in a tough spot, but I work through it. Due to me being a recent graduate and a contract, the new owners don't feel it's necessary to train my replacement. I have a single meeting with the new executive team and explain to them all the things we quality engineers provide to our customers. I get told the following. Why would we offer such services for free? We need to make money, and if this doesn't make money, then we don't need it. I agree that we should make money, but good customer service has given us a lot of contracts that otherwise would have been sent elsewhere. Let us decide how we manage, you just need to make sure the parts are good. Ok then, I take this time to decide that I am now going to work whistle to whistle and only do what is on my job description. Because I am now just working my normal 40, there are tasks that would usually get done by me after hours that start to slip. By the time I leave, all of my normal extras I do are now in complete disrepair. I thank my boss for his support and my former boss before packing my desk. My last day was just before Christmas too. Over the next month my boss calls me and asks if I would come back. After my experience with the executive team I respectfully declined. After another month I get a call from the executive team asking for me to come back. Again I declined, but I asked why they made such a request. Well, one of our customers has become unsatisfied with our new service and we need some help to get it back on track. Oh, so my customer, who I explained wanted a good level of customer service, is now upset? For context, they are about 50% of our total business. Look, will you help us or not? I will, for 2 weeks, at engineering rate. $120 per hour. Absolutely not, you can have your old contract renewed with a 50 cent per hour raise. No, thank you. And with that, I hang up. I reached out to an old friend a few months later and find out that they lost my customer and are now struggling to keep their other customers. I guess good customer service can be the difference. The next story is called No Written Contract. I worked at a small coffee shop as a barista. On the first day, I told my boss, the owner, that I would like to sign a written contract so that it's less likely to create conflicts about the working terms and conditions. He said, I'd give you a written contract when you pass probation. Ok, maybe he's environmentally friendly and wanted to save a tree or something. I asked if there would be more days off after probation and he said, yeah, one more day off per month. Three months have gone by, which normally would mean passing probation. I asked again for the offs and he said, you must have been mistaken. It was unpaid public holidays before three months, but now they are paid public holidays, so it equals to one more off per month. Firstly, paid public holidays after three months of employment is a law in my place. It isn't some perk that he generously granted me not something that anyone in the workforce wouldn't know. Secondly, I asked him for the number of days off, not the number of other kinds of rest days. The context of the conversation was entirely different. I mean, if he also counted annual leaves, PTO in my place or sick leaves, that number could have pumped Bray up. I felt like he tricked me, but I couldn't prove that, because anything he promised was only words. The one thing that made me decide to leave the place was that in 2020 times, if staff is tested positive, obviously the shop should close. Other staff members should get tested and get professionals to deep clean the shop. But no, my boss decided to do none of that. A colleague got it and we were required to operate as usual, hiding the fact that we have a positive tested staff from customers that were entering and drinking our products. 
I was even required to clean the shop with the usual apparatus. In my place, if you pass probation, you need 4 weeks notice. Within the probation period, 1 week is enough. I handed in my letter. The boss said I needed to stay 4 weeks, so that he could find a replacement and have me train my successor. Because normally that's how it works. I said no. You promised me a signed contract after probation. You didn't give me one. My offer wasn't reviewed. I didn't get a raise. You didn't even tell me I passed probation. Thanks for not giving me that written contract. I'm gonna leave in a week. He tried to argue, but no legit points came out of him. After I told him I quit, another barista also handed in his resignation letter. He needed 4 weeks though, and also a kitchen staff. The coffee shop has lost all stuff that can make good coffee, along with the skills that we carry. The last story is called Fixing the Priorities. While I was earning my bachelor's in chemistry, I worked for the university's hazmat department. My job involved inspecting labs, disposing of old chemicals, occasionally giving people the you have to be kidding me stare and plenty of other fun activities. This way our esteemed researchers can figure out science in a safe environment. Quick description of the campus. One building was a more recent construction. It has two rings and was shaped like the vaguely S-shaped Tetris block no one loves. The east ring was full of laboratories, three full stories and a basement of labs. Cancer research, Alzheimer's research, deadly banana fungus research. The place housed the most prestigious staff of brilliant minds trying to solve the world's problems. The West Wing housed the administrative offices of the university. Accountants, bookkeepers, assorted bean counters, HR and desk jockeys, all the way up to the dean. People who, unlike their eastern counterparts, seem to be the cause of many baffling questions like Why are our emergency expenditures still not approved? Why is there a problem with my payslip again? And why is there so much red tape? That building was connected to the rest of the campus via underground tunnels, access via the basement and had one elevator per ring. Now the thing is that the loading dock is in another building. So when the labs receive their orders of chemical, they grab their cart and scoot down the tunnel to their arrivals, load up their cart and carry it back to the lab to be safely stored. The rules prohibit using the stairs with hazmat. Elevator only. It's safer this way. So one day the science wing's elevator breaks down. I send a request to have it fixed. At least 4 lab employees also send it. We received the response that we all should use the administrative elevator. I replied that since one of the labs is on a sort of a half floor, the only way to reach it is the science wing elevator or a flight of stairs. I highlighted the risk of falling while carrying heavy boxes of chemicals on the stairs. Or how there was no way to safely carry very heavy gas cylinders up those stairs. They were having none of that. Use the administrative ring elevator. They will call to have the elevator fixed, but it is considered a low priority. I showed the reply to my boss. He was the type of guy for whom workplace safety is no laughing matter. I was expecting him to reply with a strongly worded email and about 4-5 to five paragraphs from various workplace safety laws text. Instead he had a strange smile. Oh, don't worry, it will soon be a priority to them. Two days later my boss comes in. Don't forget the biohazard truck comes tomorrow. You should collect the waste from the labs. Oh boy, biohazard day. The day where I get to leave my office and visit every lab in the university. I put on my lab coat and protective goggles. And don't forget, the elevator in the science wing is broken. You have to go through the administrative ring. Now I get it. When the pencil pushers decided that fixing the elevator wasn't a priority, they didn't realize that I would be walking around with a cart filled with containers bearing a bright yellow biohazard logo and that I would be returning with them full of old petri dishes full of culture medium. And any biochemist slash microbiologist who have the lab coat will tell you, culture medium stinks. So here I am, rocking in front of all those nice offices and meeting rooms. The clack 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 of my cart full of biohazard announcing my arrival and the smell of death following me. Yes, I made sure that all bags were properly sealed, but it's one of those powerful smells that just doesn't care about that. The nice lobby outside the elevator where people wait to meet the dean. Hello, sorry about the smell. The meeting room with the open door. Sorry about the noise. Can I get an update on that elevator? People walking down the hall in their office suits. Wow, they sure do seem a bit nervous seeing a guy in a lab coat driving around containers with the biohazard symbol on them. Should I tell them it's harmless unless you are severely immune compromised? Nah. And my cart has only room for three of those containers, plus the new ones I leave to replace the full ones. Biohazard day is about 2-4 to four trips. Per floor. 
after the second of such biohazard day, we got our message stating the elevator will be fixed over the weekend. And with that, we end today's video. Let me know what you think about the stories. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the stories and today's video? I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and would like to support me, please subscribe and hit the like button. And if you want to support me even further, why don't you check out the channel membership? I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Bye bye.